Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Canucks. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rock Auto, Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you. I am your host, Lachlan Irvin. Happy Friday uh, and happy be- kind of beginning of the NHL season. This is the this is the true mark of the calendar. We have the uh, NHL. We had the uh, NHL schedule TV schedules drop, particularly for the United States, which we're actually going to talk about in the second half, particularly how it impacts the Canucks this year and the differences between the Canucks coverage in the states in previous seasons to now. But we're going to start today by talking about uh, Canucks rookie camp getting underway uh, today. Uh, we it's a it's a small list of players uh, coming in, playing, uh, doing some uh, rookie, basically the the development kind of the development camp that usually takes place uh, in about I be, I want to say July, like in late August is usually when this uh, comes around. Earlier, prior to the season. Uh, before everyone goes their separate ways, they usually come in. They play. Uh, they do some scrimmages with the coaches. They do like an open, uh, an open scrimmage between all the the players that fans usually attend. This year, it's a much a smaller affair. It's simply a weekend thing. Uh, cl- obviously, closed off only to media this time around due to COVID restrictions. But uh, we're going to be getting to see a few players making their debut in Canucks gear, or at least in the Canucks practice gear. Um, starting with, of course, Vasily Pudkolzin, who, who's, uh, who's arrived, who arrived in Vancouver, uh, last week. Uh, he'll be, he'll be skating on the ice, uh, this weekend, as well as, um, as well as, uh, I believe, uh, Danila Klimovich. He'll, uh, the, their, uh, 41st overall pick in this year's draft. He will be here before he makes his trip over to, I believe, the OHL next season for his first junior year in Canada. Um, but overall, it's a very small cast of players. Normally, again, it's a lot more of a, you know, there's a lot more invitees, uh, guys on AHL contracts. It's not so much a rookie camp as it is just a develop a regular development camp. This year, it's very much uh, exclusive to the players 21 and under. Um, there's And right now in the Canucks uh, cupboard, there's only about... Uh, there's only uh, eight forwards, three defensemen, and uh, one goalie showing up. I should say two. Mike DiPietro is filling in, but he's not really. Uh, I don't think they're counting him as a rookie there. Ju- he is just there to be the second goalie because they don't have one, uh, another one. Right now, it's good. the only goaltender they have in that rookie group coming in to, uh, to Vancouver this weekend is Archer Silovs, who played uh, with the Manitoba Moose last season. He was loaned out to them. Uh, to keep him in Canada playing games. Um, also joining the uh, them this season, some players you might be a little more familiar with from their time uh, with the Utica Comets. Uh, Ethan Keppen will be joining. He is, in, uh, he is only under an AHL contract, as well as a couple uh, Canucks draft picks. Uh, Jet Wu, obviously the 37th overall pick in 2018, and Carson, and Carson Folk, who played... Who played uh, with Jet Wu on the uh, Calgary Hitmen uh, prior to uh, prior to joining the Comets, and he and he is of course a uh, 133rd overall pick in 2019. Um, also joining them this year will be uh, guys like Connor Lockhart, uh, 2021 draft pick. Uh, also, uh, who did not he did not play last season. He but he went 178th overall, and uh, you'll also be seeing uh, uh, Chase. Chase uh, Wooters, who is uh, coming to the Abbotsford Canucks on an AHL contract. Uh, he last played with the Saskatoon Blades. And um, a couple players who I, I think are worth keeping an eye on in this particular group, uh, as small as it is, um, are two former Vancouver Giants who are going to play for Abbotsford as well. They got their they got their AHL contracts this year. Um, that, that is uh, Tristan Nielsen. Uh, 21 years old, played for a big part of the Giants' offensive attack in the last couple of years, and then at Alex Canock Leapert, who is their captain, the Giants' captain for the last uh, two years as well. Um, I haven't. I saw both Canock Leapert and Nielsen playing for the Giants back in 2019-20. I was able to see them live. They were very 
much, you know, energy guys really, um, really not only could, uh, in Nielsen's case, not only was he like just great with energy, he was an incredibly skilled, uh, playmaker and a great point getter. He ended up being a huge part of the giants, uh, scoring attack for the last, for those years, uh, was one of their leader, their scoring leaders. I believe he was the, the, their top scorer last season in the shortened bubble, uh, year for the WHL and, uh, and, Kenneth Leeper's not necessarily as big a scorer, obviously a defenseman, six foot four, bit of a bigger guy. He is, but he was the he was a glue, he was a glue guy for sure. He's gonna, he's obviously gunning to try and make it into the NHL. Uh, they're both hard to play into the NHL the harder way. And um, but they're both locals and they're gonna be staying close to home for uh for the to start off their AHL career which is something that they couldn't have done say last season or the year before in a normal year this is it's it's the just the circumstances of being able to say uh pluck players from the giants who might not have necessarily gotten say the look that they needed or the development that they uh or the uh yeah just hadn't gotten the look from the scouts that they normally would um, the fact that they're able to now go to Abbotsford and potentially get that second opportunity without having to say travel across the world to get it is huge. And it could benefit the Canucks in the long run, say if a Tristan Nielsen or an Alex Canuck Leapert or somebody else, uh, down the line, maybe you end up just lucking into this great player, uh, this player who just needed that push into the AHL needed that development. And you might have that first that firsthand look of seeing it happen and, and being able to sign them to a contract before somebody else does. Those are the kinds of things and like the kinds of benefits that the Canucks are going to be getting now from Abbotsford. And you're going to start to see it take shape pretty quickly here. And starting with this development camp, it might not be like, it might not be immediate. Obviously you never know play. It's not, not every player is going to land. We know that as well as anybody does, but the idea that you can now, have play bring in a bunch more players and essentially get more lottery tickets to who could potentially hit the jackpot later on is great. That's huge. It can, it only does, it only does great things for your organization to have that opportunity. So it's good to see them using it to their full advantage here, uh, in rookie camp this week, this weekend. Um, Carl Plazic is another player to keep an eye on one, uh, 2019, uh, draft hundred, uh, 175th overall. Uh, he'll be coming in. Uh, he's been playing, of course, in Europe. He'll be getting his uh, first taste of the Canucks ice as well. And one other player worth touching on, uh, as if I haven't touched on all of them at this point. Uh, this because the again, it's a very small list this year. Um, that guy is Vic, is Victor Person. Now he played uh, in. He's been playing in Sweden for the last uh, for the last two seasons. Uh, he went. Uh, he was. I believe he was the Canucks' seventh round pick in 2020. Um, but he is slated to join the Kamloops Blazers in this upcoming season. So he'll be playing relatively close by, and he's a guy that could potentially surprise some people. I know some scouts, some scouting people. Who have been very, who are very high on the idea that uh, he is a good sleeper pick. He very well could end up uh, being one of those late round gems that you happen to get, uh, or and at the very least, he's a guy who's going to be a, who could potentially be a very good uh, a good piece of your AHL team later on. So you know, I but either way, I've heard a lot of scouts who are very high on him and what his abilities are. And you're, and I'm very excited to see what he does with against some while while playing, I guess, with some very talented, uh, some very talented rookies like Vasily Podkolzin and Danila Klimovich. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see just how uh, well he keeps up with those guys, especially considering he hasn't had the benefit of say playing in the KHL like Podkolzin has. He hasn't had the benefit of playing North American hockey like. Uh, the, like the Giants players or the or the former Comets have, it's so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he can do before he gets to that before he gets that uh, valuable North American junior hockey experience, and I I think he's gonna I think he's might end up uh, impressing some people this weekend. He's the guy I'm looking I'm gonna be looking at to hopefully to potentially do something interesting and maybe catch some people uh, some Canucks fans by surprise over the weekend. 
We'll be talking about the Canucks uh, American TV schedule uh, after this, after the break. But first, I need to tell you about Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local auto chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you could ever need from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil and even new carpet. I definitely have been looking on Rock Auto lately, especially to potentially get a light bulb uh, for the front of the car that I am borrowing. And they can, and I can choose to spend 30, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership, but instead I'm doing it I am at Rock Auto because I can save time and money. You can do, and you can do the same by going to rockauto.com right now and seeing all the parts available for your car or truck and make sure to write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for all the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Moving on now to talk about the Canucks and their TV schedule, specifically their TV schedule in the United States. Now, I am assuming like mo that most Canucks fans who listen to this show are probably in Canada, are probably located in Canada like myself. And you're probably thinking, well, why do I care about this? Why does How does this affect me? And I'm here to tell you that it actually affects you quite a bit. Not maybe not just in the way that you'll necessarily see in Canada. It definitely affects the Canucks for the better in the long term, in the future. Specifically, getting them in front of more people because this year the Canucks are going to be playing on U.S. national television four times, uh, as you might have, uh, as you might remember from the summer, the NHL uh, and. Con the NHL's contract with NBC ended uh, after, oh, I, I can't do the math in my head, I believe 15 years, uh, 2005, 2006 was their first season together. They've been uh, the only broadcaster for the NHL since that time. But this year, they're going to two, two new networks, uh, ESPN, uh, which is a huge get for the NHL, and uh, Turner Sports, a.k.a. Uh, TBS, TNT, uh, those uh, channels, specifically TNT, will be carrying most of the game. I believe most of the games. I don't know if any will find their way over to TBS, but uh, necessarily, but we'll see. Um, both of those channels also carry things like the NBA, uh, the MLB, uh, ESPN carries NFL games. Um, so this is the first time that the NHL is really in with the rest of the big boys in terms of their national package. Uh, their national television package. It's been a long time since the NHL was on multiple different networks at the same time. And frankly, I think they're learning that that was a, it was a bit of a, it was a mistake. Like not necessarily, not nece like I can see how it was beneficial to them at the time to be like, we're going to give our entire NHL slate of games to one channel and they're going to go all in with gusto. The problem with that is that as soon as NBC and other ch and any channel potentially realized they didn't have to have anyone to compete with for uh, viewership on, of that sport, they kind of stopped trying. They kind of stopped putting in as much effort as say they would if they were having to fight for viewership of games with another channel. And at the end of the day, that just makes the health the competition is health makes for healthier, better product for everybody. And we're seeing it right now because the Canucks are going to be on TV four times this year. Uh, three of those games are going to be on TNT, January 5th against the Islanders, March 9th against Montreal, and April 6th in Vegas against the Golden Knights, the first two being home games in Vancouver. And then one game uh, will be on ESPN 
specifically the Seattle Kraken inaugural home game, uh, which the Canucks will be a part of on October 23rd. And that may not sound like a lot of games. Obviously, we get all 82 here in Canada. But for context, this is an important context, and I tweeted this out earlier, that the grand total of times the Canucks played a regular season game on American national television under NBC, like under the guidance of NBC over the last seven years was twice. They played twice that. And th both of those games were in the last two years. Prior to that, they went five years without a single game on national TV on national TV in the States. And yes, a lot of those years happened to coincide with the Canucks being bad and not a good hockey team, but it also, overlaps with say some of the Canucks like the best young American players in hockey and players you should be marketing uh potentially not getting the uh the the viewership or uh being recognized by uh like Brock Besser. Brock Besser had an incredible rookie season and I remember thinking it was so weird that he did not get a single game on national TV, that they didn't put a single game around, hey, look at what Burnsville, Minnesota's Brock Besser's doing. Like, that feels like missed opportunities. And I get that maybe the Canucks themselves aren't the hugest draw, but that's why you, you play up the angle of the young American star for the American audience. And NBC never did that. They really didn't do enough. They The last two games that the Canucks were on... NBC. The, in the final two years, they branched out a little bit, but even then, it wasn't perfect. They didn't get. They did. They only got the one game on opening night in 2019 uh, against the Kings. That was a late game. Uh, it was the Canucks' 50th anniversary game, which was a, a good call to broadcast the game. It ended up being Quinn Hughes' first NHL goal. That was huge. And then last year, they played one game, one Canucks game against the Canadians on American TV, uh, which was one of the I believe, if I remember correctly, one of the worst games the Canucks played all season. They were awful. It was right at the beginning of the year. But then that was it. They had another four months after that and didn't play them again once. We're going to finish up our conversation on the Canucks and their American TV uh, history of recent of the recent times. But first, I need to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, and they have so many delicious flavors for you to try. Flavors like salted caramel orange, cookies and cream, and even raspberry. And if you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mix box where you'll get two of each of their nine flavors. Not only are Bilt Bar flavors the best tasting, but they are healthy too, ranging from 7 to 18 grams of protein and 130 to 180 calories per bar, which is great for someone like me who's trying to snack less, but do it in a healthier way. And here I get all of that because it's amazing flavors and they're all tasty and they're all healthy. You can order today by going to builtbar.com and use or built.com, excuse me, and using the promo code locked15 to get 15% off of your next order. That's promo code locked15 at for 15% off at built.com. There's only one betting place that has you covered and one place that we trust, and that's betonline.ag. We're back and we're Better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back to start another football season. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100 for that 100% welcome bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, hockey, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So the Canucks being on television four times over the course of the season is frankly a big deal, and it's showing that because of two channels carrying... Uh, NHL games, not only are the, is there obviously more airtime to go around, both companies are going to be more incentivized to show as many teams as they possibly can. It's going to give them more opportunities to showcase the Canucks in the future, especially as they potentially get better with players like Pedersen and Hughes growing into their prime, Besser, Demko, you name it. There are reasons for the Canucks to start showing up on American television more. 
And that will require uh, ESPN and TNT, two huge channels in the States, uh, specifically known for their abilities to really market superstars. Um, if you're not familiar with their broadcast, specifically their NBA broadcasts, both are very well known for being able to market that sport. And they've done wonders for the NBA and how they really showcase the superstar talents of the league, regardless of what team they're playing on. They do a very good job of it. And the hope is that they can turn that energy over to the NHL and make it just as uh well done a product in terms of how they market superstars because it's something that the league has been lacking for a very long time. I think this is going to be just the start of a huge new era for hockey. You hope they're getting it right. You And it, it sure seems like they're starting off on a great foot with only, I believe, three teams this year not playing a single game on American TV, all Canadian. You hope that changes later on. But even then, uh, things like uh, ESPN Plus are are going to factor in, um, which is uh, where uh, the NHL TV, like the 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 live streaming uh, NHL games, are all going to be going in the U.S. next season and uh, for the next seven years. And that in itself is huge. So it means that essentially anyone who's paying the five the five ninety nine a month for that ESPN Plus subscription now also gets all the NHL games they could ever want, which is fantastic for getting more people to watch a sport, putting it in front of more people for a cheaper price is a genius way to get people to try and to try watching hockey for the first time. And that means they're going to get to see all 82 Canucks games if they want to. That's incredible. And along with everyone else in the NHL, it's the start of a new era for the NHL in terms of their television in, uh, in uh, the South of the border. And eventually that might, you know, spill over into Canada when the next rights deal comes up. I know things have not necessarily gone according to plan under the big Rogers contract they signed back in 2014. So uh, you'll hope that this is especially the start of a huge new era for the NHL and the Canucks in the U.S. And hopefully that turns into this great new rena renaissance of, of NHL television on TV. And that is it for this Friday edition of Locked on Canucks. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sister uh, podcast, Locked on Bets. Betting on the NHL doesn't have to be a guessing game if you listen to the new Locked on Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked on Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag, wherever you get your podcasts. I've been your host, Lachlan Irvin. You can follow me on Twitter at Lock in the Crease. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Canucks. It was temporarily restricted for some reason, but we figured that out and it is it is 100% fixed. Do not worry about it. They thought, I, they thought uh, I was a robot. I don't know what that says about me, but I guess so. I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Um, and uh, be sure to keep on the lookout. Uh, next week, we're going to be starting the five days a week schedule and we may or may not be starting that with some uh with someone with a certain uh someone potentially coming to do the show next week uh that there might be a surprise special guest uh so keep uh keep your eyes open for that next uh over the course of the weekend into next week as we get started back into hockey as we really get back to the tw as the to the 2021 22 season just getting underway this has been locked on canucks i've been lachlan irvin thank you for listening and i will see you next week take care